It's so lovely to be here so early in the morning. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Monday morning. Uh, I've already seen the beach, which is so nice. Oh, yeah. I went for a walk along the beach this morning, which was nice. How beautiful. More. It's been raining a fair bit here, so it's been hard to, to get my head around going because um, you wake up and it's raining and, yeah, so. It does make such a difference, though, when you when you get out and, and start your day like that. It, it really yeah. does feel so different. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially for me at the moment because um, – I'm living in New South Wales and I've moved away from everyone. So I've moved away from, um, like, you know, if I'd moved back up to Queensland, I'd be be okay because I'd be with all my clan. But um, I've moved away and so that, you know, I'm, I'm accessible to family but not accessible to family. <laughs> so, and because of the restrictions... It's um it's made it even harder. So I'm pretty much alone all the time. So um yeah, it's been it's been a little bit tough the last um week actually. So mm -hmm. um, well yeah. with everyone visiting, you really notice that um difference from yeah, from that combined energy and then back to your energy. Um, yeah, I used to live by myself for a number of years as well. And I always used to find that it just took that little bit of time for my energy to reclaim the space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I'm I'm a real introvert, so I mm. love it by myself. Mm. However, um, yeah, it's just been a little bit too much and, mm. and uh, it's been a while. I did have the kids over last weekend, but something, yeah, I've just... I've just done a recode, so I'm feeling a lot better. <laughs> so um, good morning, Helen. We've got um, Helen saying hello this morning. Um, I don't know who else is on here. We've got a few people. So today we're going to be talking about Beyond the Five Senses, uh, mm -hmm. which is exciting because we've been sort of covering bits anyway. So who wants to start? I think Asha should start. <laughs> okay, no worries. Hi, I'm <laughs> um, yeah, being an introvert as well, I always do struggle to um to go first, but but that's all right. I'm I'm happy to lead the way today. Um, so I guess for me, beyond the five senses really starts to tap into this concept about the great human illusion, really, in that we're born into this world and we make sense of it through our five senses. And what's never really discussed is that those five senses are essentially like a sieve of how we perceive reality. So we're only ever seeing or perceiving rather a snippet of what's going on. And then based on what meaning we assign to those snippets, that then forms our perception. And we then we assume that that is reality. Um, and so where we kind of get into the beyond the five senses is, you know, concepts that are spoken of, but are perhaps less tangible. And so then they tend to get put into the um, spiritual or woo-woo or not actually being able to be rigorously um, studied. And so then people move away from it out of fear and it also can activate this sense of, well, they're doing something and yet I'm not. And it can kind of trigger an inferiority complex, which further moves people away. So for me, Beyond the Five Senses is all about um, intuition and actually gets back to the, the real fabric of reality, which is the infinite intelligence itself and kind of this concept of the universe actually being one mind that we're all a part of and it's just about awareness as to what we're tapped into or not but that actually means reducing the emphasis of the five senses mm. so suspending all of that i guess absolutely and and one of the things about this particular time space reality is that um, science is starting ca to catch up, right? Mm. So, you know, the, the, for example, study of epigenetics, where they're discovering that that um, you know emotions uh, are being um, 
locked into our DNA from, you know, a, a lineage, uh, you know, an aspect of our lineage and that, um, you know, law of attraction, that, that um, particles of our thoughts attract other um, particles within the vibration of the, the fabric. So um, mm. all of that, you know, it's, it's all alluding to the fact that we're all making it up, right? It's yeah. all, it's all <laughs> we're making it up. And it's all, um, as you were saying, you know, like this filtering process that we, you know, we, we see, we see, we hear, we touch, you know, um, we, we experience, we taste, so we think it's real mm. because it mm. seems to be a physical experience that we're having. And yet it's, it's a filtering process that we've put through our, um, our, our you know, um, amygdala, all, all these different aspects mm. of ourselves and make chemical um, functions within our system and then make a perceived awareness, of, you know, and a definition of what that is. And then next thing we've labelled something, right? You know, mm. this taste is sweet. <laughs> this, this, um, this, uh, you know, is red, or this, is, this sound is is angelic, and you know, like so, all of these things that we start creating and labelling so that we can function in the world, mm. and and we've sort of created ourselves over generational history to to think that that's the only way. I, I can feel that you want to talk, Nikita, uh, Nicolette. I just um, I just remembered something as well from way back when I was listening. Um, I used to get into the Mayan calendar. And um, I don't know if uh, you ladies or the people that are watching, the, the women that are watching um, know this, but when we moved, you know, when the Mayans um, and, you know, a lot of the Indigenous cultures were taken over by... Um, you know, white, um, uh, you know, religious um, doctrination. Uh, they, the Mayan calendar was, is actually measures um, consciousness. Whereas we went into um, the Gregorian calendar, right? And so that measures time and space. Mm. So all of a sudden, everything was gone from you know fifth sixth dimension all of a sudden we're measuring the dimension mm, and yeah. so as soon as that happened that started that was one of those physical manifestations for us to start being identifying with being physical mm. because it was in out the very fabric of our measurement of our consciousness on this planet you know oh we're in this time at this, you know, at this place, this is our, this is where we're at, you know, and so it, it sort of limited us um, from thinking in those higher realms. Yeah, wow. I didn't realise the, the Mayan calendar was was based on levels of consciousness. That's that's fascinating. Mm. 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 Yeah, I, I, could, I could spend a whole... <laughs> Please do. Do a master class <laughs> for us. Yeah, yeah, on the main calendar. It's quite an interesting um mm. I'm a I'm a three storm, so it wasn't when I when I discovered my main sun sign, I um I went, Oh, that's why I can do what I do because um three is the vibration of the minor to the macro, you know, like so I can feel vibration at, at its smallest um aspect. And and at the time when I got into it, I was just doing energy work on people. Like, oh, that's why I can feel people's energy moving. You know, the cells talking to me and things like that. So um, that's it, so it, cool. <laughs> in the in the Maya tradition, they actually, when you were born, um, you were born um, them knowing who you were going to be or who you were, because you were, that day signified that that um, that's who you were going to grow into sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it sounds fascinating. Please, I know you're a very busy woman, but if, um, <laughs> if, you, want, yeah, if you feel yeah. called to, I would, I would very <laughs> happily sit and listen to all of that. Yeah, but, yeah that's, that's a good funny. idea, actually. Maybe yeah. I should do a meet-up on it or something. Ooh. If anyone's on here and wants to know anything about the main calendar, um, put a yes in the comments and I'll, I'll um, 
We'll do something Nicolette. about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicolette, I've got more to say, but Nicolette, I, I feel you want to oh, share. There's a couple of things that are coming up um, for me to share. And for me, um, Beyond the Five Senses relates very heavily into um, my own spiritual journey and energy work because when we um, when we choose to meditate and sit in stillness and um, close down our access to a lo- to to as many of those senses as we can and just sit with our sit with our own stillness and feel what is beyond our physical experience that that has been so huge for me to understand understand what my own energy state is and how it relates to the world physically and how I relate to um, to my spiritual being mm. beyond my five senses. As a healer and uh, energy worker, that is all about actually tuning out um, outside influence and tuning into myself and the person who I'm working with and what their what their soul is speaking um, and feel like you were saying about feeling feeling vibrations and feeling what's going on at an energetic level um, and you you both do do that in in your own ways as well when you're working with people and I think to bring it back to a point where where our listeners can, can relate to what beyond the five senses is for them in their own experience. Like what do you feel when you're in meditation or what do you feel when you're um, energetically connecting with someone or what do you feel when you walk into a room and you meet people and you get a different, different sense from each person about who they are, not physically, not from your five senses but from the, the vibration that you get from them or the, the energy that you get from them or you can learn so much about yourself and others by be getting beyond the five senses, I guess. Mm, absolutely. And and um, I'd love to hear also in the comments um, people um, answering Nicolette's question, but um, I just had the thought when you were first waking up to that, Nicolette, what, uh, what was it like for you? Um, it was. It made me realise that there was so much more to my life and so much more to me than the the structure that I'd been born into. Um, and as we go through life, we're constantly getting that feedback from our outer world and and receiving it through our five senses right we we do this we say we say something a certain way that gets approved of or disapproved of by our family around us and we mold ourselves into um the reflection of of our outer experience of our family of our friend groups of our um people who we want to accept us Mm -hmm. And when you step, when you make the choice to step away from that need of of acceptance and actually just feel into your own soul's calling and your own what what you need to be happy and joyful and that um, and you start to express that into the world, you give others permission to do the same. You give others permission to. Um, to follow their light and their their dreams and their um, because it's really scary because our our since we were born how we are taught to be is through those five senses and through those um, uh, acceptance or non acceptance of people around us so it's actually it's actually really frightening and I like I I feel I feel that fear fear that I felt. Like when you said when you first woke up to that, the first time I went online and started talking about um, my healing journey or 
started talking about was leading meditations. It was terrifying because I knew that my my family and my family's friends and they were and they they were all like, "What the hell is she talking about?" And what 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 sort of a cult has she joined? Or like. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) but the more we stand in our truth the more people go oh that's you know that t-shirt that comes up online that's a Nicolette thing (laughs) and that's okay (laughs) and and you know like um I because I know what it was like for me I I spoke I'd love to ask um Asha the same you know like when you're that first moment that you recognised that you were experiencing something outside of the five senses, what was that like? <laughs> oh, what Nicolette said <laughs> just resonates at like a core level. Um, it's really funny. Like I remember being a kid and just having this kind of sense of other Um, And then, you know, I turned all my attention to the sciences. And and I think, you know, that for many reasons, um, and one of which is, you know, I'm a massive nerd, so I've kind of got to own that part of me as well, you know. Like I'd love to say, oh, it's all society and I was indoctrinated into it. Nah, there's a a thirst there, you know, so I can can, can own that. Um, But... I always remember this kind of holding space for, you know, because these questions would come up about, you know, do you believe in in spirits and, you know, um, do you believe in extraterrestrial and and all these things, you know, they're, they're common questions that are asked, you know, over the lifespan. And, and I remember just seeing people be really like, stoic in their beliefs of no I don't believe that or or whatever it is and and this kind of real really closed off um expression of of how they perceive the world and then you know there's so many stories of people who have experienced more and have experienced more and have experienced more that I just remember you know, up until my awakening, this like holding space for in going, well, I really don't know. And how arrogant and ignorant of me to believe that just because I haven't experienced something to date means that others haven't or that it's not accessible or not real. And for me, it was always this point of to believe that we are the only um, planet that houses life (laughs) in the vastness of the universe. I was just like, just from like a purely statistical perspective, I was like, yeah, like (laughs) that's nonsensical. But anyway, I'll hold space because, because, you know, at that point, you know, I, that's all I could do. But I also remember in that holding space um, frame of mind that I was in, going, you know what, I feel like the physical world is enough for me to wrangle with right now. So as much as I'm not discounting it, I also don't really want to go off and play in that realm right now because I kind of feel like I've got my hands full as it is. And then, like we know, for people who awaken, generally the universe says, well, that's enough of that and over the cliff you go. You know, so um, so for me, the awakening felt kind of like I was on this giant slippery dip, but I couldn't feel the slippery dip beneath me. You know, so it was just this, this really kind of overwhelming experience of my inner world becoming more rich and vibrant than the outside world. Mm. And, you know, given that I, that my training is in the medical model, um, you know, the number one theory that comes to mind is, Christ, Asha, you've lost your mind, you know, <laughs> like, like you've, you know, and yeah. so I, I, I legitimately had to ask myself that of, of okay, have, have I, have I gone mad? But, um, you know, and thankfully I know the checklist kind of like off by heart and I went through and I went, okay, well, as much as I'm having these really rich experiences, <laughs> there's no other criteria to suggest that I'm mad, um, and even if there was, what does that actually mean? 
you know, and I remember the word, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and I remember um in one of my very first classes, um, learning about, you know, essentially psychosis, that based on the medical model, um, that you know, if we're having these really rich experiences, what determines psychosis versus um uh spiritual experiences like ghosts or seeing angels or um or you know visions that are that are real that that are so real to you but aren't perceived by other people um and it came down to culture what is our culture because in cultures people who have this richness of of experiences can be regarded as as sages or you know enlightened or whatever it is and then you come across to the western society and such so, part of that community yes and a respected respected part of that community that anchors people to um where we're okay because this person this person can um guide us from a place that the rest of us aren't aren't yeah. seeing. exactly exactly so so when we take into account that the the only difference is culture and meaning like we said at the very beginning and then that shapes people's experience of themselves having these experiences that's when we can start to go okay well there's so much evidence across the globe to say that there's more than our five senses mm. you know whether it be through esp um, you know, psychics who solve um, murder mysteries, you know, there's so much evidence that what if we just open ourselves to allow ourselves to start experiencing um, the richness of what's available to us in a non-judgmental and non-fearful way? Mm. What difference would that make? So that was my journey. Of, um, I love what you said about um, people grab hold of I believe that or I don't believe that. If you mm. sit in a, in the and we've talked about the observer space before, of well I don't I don't I'm not really attached to or I'm not attached to any belief set. Mm. Mm. I'm mm. allowing myself to experience life <laughs> fully without yeah. that construct. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I think that that's one of the reasons why. Um, for me, myself, I was able to experience these things because of my innocence. I didn't have any, mm. you know, um, I, I I think I've been an observer pretty much all my life. And Helen's put here, are we marginalising the enlightened beings in our society? Or well, as, you know, as Nicolette was saying, and I'll just put that up for um, the recording, but um as saying, you know, there used to be the, um, you know, the shamans or the, the medicine people of the community, but as we've um, shifted and lived through this experience, there's become more of a collective consciousness where more people are starting to tap in mm -hmm. to that understanding and we're breaking down those moulds and stuff. And quite often, quite often if someone tries to put themselves in that position now, it's from an egoic mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. More, more and more people are uh, tapping into um, the fact that it's within ourselves, right? And um, I, I, as I was listening to you both, I was thinking about how, um, you know, I actually say that my spiritual awakening was in my, um, after my kids and, uh, you know, when I moved up to far north Queensland and I was very lucky because um, I started having all these spiritual awakenings, you know, another state away from my family. So they didn't even know what was going on most of the time and didn't really care. Um, and so uh, there wasn't Facebook back then. But um, I remember my, uh, you know, I, I was listening to you ladies and I was going, you know, it's really interesting because I think I've always had it, but there was this definite waking up. Um, but my first ever physical experience um, was before I had kids. And I'd, um, I'd actually gone to a new age shop, which in those days was down alleys. Like there was no 
spiritual books in in you know Hemix or whatever the you know bookshops you just couldn't get spiritual books anywhere and and um they had like a spiritual awakening or something like that like beginners thing and i it was in my hometown and me and a girlfriend from school um went to it right and it was just after school so i must have been maybe about 18 or something and and as you were talking i just remembered because the we were standing out the front of waiting for these two women to open up and one of their sons turned up and he had just hitchhiked down from cairns so it was my first i didn't even know where cairns was right so it was my first like seed of information about cairns i ended up up there for 17 years right but um before he left they actually said oh do you want to come and do the meditation with us and so they took us through this this meditation and um at the end we all had to share what we did and and i'd been gone through this rainforest and i was you know found this big um lake this beautiful big lake and there was this big rock and so i went on this rock and I jumped in and I swam in the water. And as I got up, I thought, I felt in the meditation, someone's watching me. So I got out of the water and I climbed up a tree and I watched this person walk underneath and be hot, like through the, the path. Well, as we're t- t- talking the story, right, the guy that turns from Cairns, He's talking first and he starts sharing this, he's been in this forest and blah, blah, blah. And, and he said, and then I saw this, this woman and she, she jumped into, the, into this lake and I'm, I'm listening and going, no, <laughs> like, like seriously. And, and then he said, and, and so I went over to find her and I couldn't find her. And before I could say anything, I went, it's because I went up a tree. <laughs> is like oh my gosh can this actually be real and he shared the same like we had we were in the same space wherever that space was we're in the same space and i was in you know i must have been about 18. oh wow at the time that's so cool that's so cool cool. and and i i'm a little i'm a little envious because my um awakening to that world was only five years ago Oh, yeah, yeah. I, but I feel like a babe in the woods compared to. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like the collective consciousness, you know, the, the level of information gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Yeah. And so, you know, mine might have taken me a long time, but you've got access like, bang, it just drops mm-hmm. in. You know what I mean? The yeah. Same- and, and I think a really great example for people listening of when this happens for you is like when you're in conversation and you're all you're all talking and and you say something and someone else says oh I was about to say that you know yeah. like the exact the exact words or the exact because if you're tapped in yeah then you're connected with each other on a level that is that is not physical it's energetic yeah and so so the proof of that can come out of your mouth if, if you know what i mean absolutely mm. and definitely that's happened like i'm i more and more and more if i think of someone like on the weekend two different people i thought of and within minutes they're ringing mm. you know mm-hmm. haven't spoken to them for months and months yep um you know like and and you just sort of get used to it right like mm. it's mm. just part of what's happening um yeah and and can i just share also i know we've gone over a little bit but um on the weekend i did some movie binging (laughs) and i watched a movie called winter's tale have have either of you seen it oh my gosh it's such an amazing beautiful movie winter's tale you should really watch it um and there's like the whole thing is like you can watch it from this third dimensional place where it's just you know 
um, a good a guy that, that needs some help, you know, and these bad guys after him and blah, blah, blah. And then there's all these different layers through it where it's actually the, the guys, you know, a henchman for the devil and, you know, like, and, and there's his judge and blah, 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 you know, and there's all this stuff in it. But you can actually see all these levels in it and it's um, it really helped me to remember to to wake up you know like yes we've got some crazy stuff going on in the world at the moment um and wake up to those higher realms what are we here for what are we doing tune into them Mm -hmm. Um, and i i had another moment also where i um recognized that um the last house i was in i connected in and asked if i could do healing on the on that earth um, with the Indigenous there, and they'd said yes, and I recognised on the weekend I hadn't done that yet here. And, um, mm-hmm. and so I did, and it shifted a whole heap of stuff for me, you know, and I asked him permission and connecting him with the um, the custodians of the land here, mm-hmm. and it, I could feel this, like, oh, being up in the realm so much is so nice to reconnect with the earth space as well. So Yeah, awesome some beautiful things to play with or to be present to when you're working not just mm. in the five senses. Mm. There's so mm. much more. Mm. Um, I really do feel, I feel sad for people that only connect in with their five senses. You know, no wonder there's so much um, sadness and depression on the earth when you don't recognise that there's so much more open to you. Mm. That's right. And and I think it's also just kind of worthwhile noting that as much as, you know, for, for the three of us, um, the awakening, so to speak, f- was like, <laughs> it was almost like an inevitability or we get dropped in it or, or that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't, you know, it, exploring and expanding into this space doesn't necessarily have to feel like or be the slippery dip adventure you know like you can you can do this in a really guided um you know very safe way because these practices are safe you know and it's really important that people understand that as well that Mm. you know meditative practices um you know they're there's such powerful healing modalities and they're all so backed by science as well for people that you know need that assurity and sense of certainty and going well well, what is this? And it's not something that, um, that yeah, necessarily has to happen to you or you're waiting for that divine time of, of this is my time. If you feel that sense of knocking at your consciousness of, of what else and, and what can I open up to, you know, like you two beautiful ladies, um, my, you know, I also teach meditative practices, you know, like there, there are guides that have, mm. Mm, you know, gained mastery over these things that can step you through in a way that feels um, safe and enlightening and expanding. Mm. So, you know, you, you can you can be, um, you know, at the helm of the pace of your own journey too. Yeah. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I like, you know, uh, for me, I was on this journey with no help and support and I had no idea what I was doing and I did have to check my checklist. Of, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, Good, so yeah, I'm not the I, only one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so um, I do definitely agree with you, Asha, that mm. especially these days, one, um, you know, as soon as you recognise that you can have whatever experience you choose, you know, like we, we're we making it up. Like I'm not joking, we're making it up. And so, um, you know, once you recognise that, you can choose whatever choice you want in that, in that situation. But I also definitely recognise the importance of having some sort of mentor or um, someone to facilitate and guide you through the process, you know, like so that you can ask questions and, and get an idea of, um, you know, where to go and, ha- and if you want to accelerate, how do you accelerate and all those sort of things. So um, there's there's a lot out there at the moment and can, you know, you can go down the rabbit hole um, if you don't reach out to people. So I agree. Well done. Well, ladies, I think we've gone over over overtime. 
Over, over. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, we had a really beautiful, um, on the weekend, I saw someone um, comment on one of our, uh, must have been last week's, and said how much they love listening to us three. Um, yeah, and, and they actually said earth, earth, air and water. I think it was water. That's and so apparently I'm air. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I thought I was grounded. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I the earth? I would say maybe. I she didn't say. I just asked what, she, what her interpretation of me was. Um, and she said I was the air. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so very interesting. But um, I love that um, so many women get, you know, a lot out of this and watch the replays mm -hmm. and everything. So thank you, everyone. And yeah. lovely to have you uh, both on again. And we will catch up next week, yeah? We will. Sounds great. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye. See ya.